Hi, I'm Catherine Wheeler for FPTV in Washington, D.C. From the cars that we drive to the food on our grocery shelves, nearly everything we do in our daily lives depends on oil. Yet oil is also the common thread running through many of the world's thorniest foreign policy problems, be it the war in Iraq or Vladimir Putin's power grabs in Russia. In other words, oil is a blessing just as it is a curse. But what if we were to run out of oil? In his recent article for Foreign Policy, Vijay Vathaswaran of The Economist magazine argues that the world has more oil today than it did three decades ago, and we will switch to alternative energy sources before we ever run out of oil. Robert Hirsch, the author of a famous report on peak oil, says this view is far too optimistic. Peak oil, he says, is a challenge like none modern society has ever faced before. So who's right? Judge for yourself in this episode of FPTV. Is the world running out of oil? Yes, but you have to put that in context. The issue is not how much oil there is left, but how much oil production there is now and will be in the near future. We did an analysis for the Department of Energy a couple years ago, and it's been out and it's been reviewed by people all over the world, and nobody has found that it's fundamentally incorrect. So the conclusion that we came to, looking at the limiting case, the best that could be done with the whole world mobilizing as best it possibly could, it would take 20 years to really catch up to the problem. And if peaking is about to happen now or happening in the next few years, we don't have that 20 years, so we're in trouble. Of course, oil is a non-renewable resource. There are only so many bones of crunched up dinosaurs that are under the ground, so by definition, we're running out of oil. But the important and relevant question is if peak oil happened yesterday, as some people say, or if that peak is decades away. And that matters tremendously for how we organize our public policies. And history suggests that the interplay of economics and innovation, as well as the vast remaining reserves of unconventional oil, mean that we're nowhere near that peak. If oil peaks, how will we know that it is happening? Well, one of the things that uh, we'll see is that oil prices will continue to go up significantly. And that's a little creepy because that's what's happening right now. Oil prices are, ju are hovering just below $100 a barrel. And if you had gone back four or five years and talked about oil at $100 a barrel, economists would have thought that that was insane. But we're there now. Why are oil prices so high? The high prices are associated with the fact that demand is very high and uh, supply is limited. And you can look at a whole variety of reasons why supply is limited, but the thing that is of greatest concern is that there just isn't that much oil there. The reserve numbers may be very large, but the thing that's important, and I go back to the same point again, is how fast can you produce it? We have prices that are higher for an interplay of forces, one of them having to do with underinvestment for political reasons, the second has to do with financial speculation of the markets. And under the specter of a potential invasion by the U.S. of Iran, uh, war talk coming from Turkey about the Kurds, uh, you have a lot of geopolitical reasons adding fuel to the fire of financial markets. These are all very interesting and important factors. They don't reveal anything one way or the other about whether the actual hydrocarbons are in the ground or not. What should we do now? The kind of things that, uh, that we're doing in this country just don't make energy sense. Ultimately, government's going to have to play a significant role, not by doing things themselves, but by paving the way for the private sector. We need them to be building plants to make liquids out of coal, to make uh, liquids out of shale, to do more enhanced oil recovery in the United States and elsewhere in the world, uh, to be uh, uh, doing more with heavy oil in Canada and Venezuela if we could uh, conceivably have a way to do it down there. I tend to be relaxed about peak oil, but there are plenty of other reasons we should do what the peak oil thinkers argue anyway. That is to move the world off of oil. The environmental harm to local pollution, global warming, the potential for economic shock, especially given that, in my view, the problem is not scarcity. The problem is concentration. Two-thirds of the world's remaining reserves of conventional oil are in the hands of just five countries. Saudi Arabia has a quarter, 
and its four immediate neighbors have roughly a 10% share of all the world's remaining conventional oil. That's a very problematic part of the world. I argue for a, f a forceful move away from oil, something the peak oil crowd should be very happy with. In my view, we should be so lucky that the oil is about to run out. It's a wishful thinking, because if that were true, then it would make this move much easier. It's a frightening, frightening thought to think that the oil and the, the energy simply won't be there. It's, it's terrible, and you're not going to be able to switch to electric power because you cannot run the automobile that you have now on electric power. You need a whole new electric vehicle, and we're not ready to do that kind of thing yet. And some people would like to uh, go to windmills or solar cells or something else, and you can't do it. You simply can't do it. There's limits, turns out, to every energy form, and oil has just been a great gift to all of us.